Let's talk potty training. The good, the bad, the ugly. You're frustrated, your kid's frustrated, but we gotta do it. Welcome to Empowered Parent Television. I'm Kayla North, and I'm so glad you're joining me today. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and the bell notification so you'll know when we post a new video. So, you're trying to potty train your kid and you're feeling kind of frustrated. I have a few questions that I always ask moms and dads when they are looking at potty training, or maybe it's not potty training, maybe it's my kids having accidents and they're well past the age that I think they should be potty trained. Well, the first thing I say is, are they ready? Just because you have a three-year-old doesn't mean they're ready to be potty trained. Maybe you have a seven-year-old that's still having accidents. It may not mean they're quite ready yet. And we're gonna talk about a few things that might be causing it. But first you gotta look, are they ready? Do they have the cognitive, emotional, um, verbal skills to be able to say, I need to go to the bathroom to be able to recognize it, all of those things. Because social norms tell us that by two or three, a kid should be potty trained and ready. Now some kids are, but if you're parenting a kid who's experienced trauma, they may be emotionally and developmentally behind their peers. And I know it's frustrating because you may not be able to get them into the program you want to get them into, the preschool you want to get them into. The reality is we have to go with when they are ready. So if your child is not showing signs of readiness, and there's tons of books that'll, that'll tell you, there's tons of places you can see some of those signs of readiness, but don't go on social norms. Don't go on, well, my kids, my friend's kids only two and my kids almost four. They should be potty trained. Eventually they'll get there, but we have to say, we gotta go on their schedule and when they are ready to potty train. The second thing I would say is, could it be a sensory need? So we talk a lot about sensory needs. I mean, you hear a lot of talk about sensory, but have you heard about this term, interoception. Interoception basically means the brain is not communicating with the body and sending the right signals so that the child knows they need to go to the bathroom. Sometimes they don't realize they need to go until they've already started going. And then shame starts to creep in, especially if they're older, especially if they are beyond that socially acceptable age to maybe have an accident. Um, and so shame creeps in because they think I'm not supposed to have done that. Well, I'm just not going to tell anybody that that happened. And then they'll never know because we don't ever know when they have an accident, right? It, they're not aware of this until they have to go. And so maybe it's an interoception issue. So what do you do if you've got a kiddo with interoception issues where their brain and their body are not communicating? Well, one thing you could do is practice some mindfulness. You can practice just some awareness of their body. If you search for um, mindfulness activities for kids, you'll find all sorts of activities you can do just to make them become aware of their own body, asking them things like, how does your tummy feel? How do your toes feel? And making them just pay attention to different parts of their body so that they become aware of those things and their brain can start sending those signals that they need to go to the bathroom and they know what that actually feels like when it happens. The third thing I would say to you is could it be control? Very often our kids have um, a need for control because their life has been controlled by adults. Their life has been a little out of control. If you're a foster or an adoptive parent and your child has come to you um, where they've had multiple caregivers in the first few years of their life, then things have been pretty out of control in their life. And we figured out there's several things that kids can control. One thing is when they go to the bathroom, where they go to the bathroom, um, and then sleeping and eating. Those are some things we can't make them go. And it's so frustrating. And I know if you're watching this video, you're probably in the throes of trying to figure this out. And maybe your kids have an accident and you're cleaning up multiple accidents a day and you're feeling yourself getting frustrated. You're feeling yourself with your temper flaring because you feel like your kids should be able to do this but they're not. It could be that this is one area that they have control over. And the more we push against our kids when they're trying to take control, 
the more control they try to take. So what we have to do seems really counterintuitive, but first you have to not react in that moment when there's an accident. Let's just clean it up and move on and don't worry about it. The second thing you have to do is you have to figure out ways to give appropriate amounts of control in other areas. So maybe you're starting to give your kids more choices about what they're eating or what they're wearing or where they're going or activities they're doing. You know, we homeschool our kids and so we have a list of things that they need to get done, but I can give my kids a choice if they wanna do math first or reading first. I can give them choices and a little control in different areas. So if we're seeking control in one area, like potty training, what other area could I give my kids choices? What other area could I find some control that my kids can have? What can they take control of so that they don't have to be taking all the control in the potty training in the potty area? The other thing is begin working on relationship. Begin working on building those healthy attachments with your kids so that you have the relationship you need to be able to help your kids through whatever situation it is, whether it's potty training, whether it's relationships with other people, whatever it is, we always wanna be building relationships and building those healthy attachments. And so even in the midst of potty training struggles, even in the midst of accidents, well beyond the time when our kids, when we think they should not be having accidents, we can help by building relationships with our kids, helping them feel safe and giving them some measure of control in other areas of their lives so they don't have to take it in that area. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I'd love for you to leave me a comment, things that have worked for you, um, maybe some other areas that you're struggling in so we can make more videos. So thanks for watching.